I am at the Quantock Hills, an area of outstanding natural beauty. This is kind of my local come to spot to get outside, get a little bit of wildness. Um, so it's kind of like Heathland, Moorland, it's quite high up. Uh, it's only about 13 square miles or something, maybe a little bit bigger than that. But uh, it's just an awesome place to come. And as you can probably see by all the cars behind me, it is the place to be at the weekend. So it's quite busy, but it's a Sunday afternoon now. It's about two o'clock. So I'm quite late getting here and I've got a nine mile route ahead of me, but I'm quite excited to explore this route. I've done it loads and loads of times and I love doing it in winter because it's just such a fantastic place to be. There's no leaves on the trees. So you've got epic views right across Somerset. And I just really like being here. But it is a very blustery winter's day today. You know, it's sleeting and snowing intermittently. So we'll see how we get on. I'm gonna wrap up nice and warm and we'll give it our best shot. But hopefully we'll be back before it gets dark. That's obviously the main aim. And uh, let's crack on. And we are off. There's this like really random ice cream van that is making so much noise and definitely ruining the ambience. So I'm pleased to get away from that. Let's leave the car park behind. And uh, let's head out into the wind. Blimey, it's fresh out today. With the wind, it feels like temperature of about minus seven. So uh, it's kind of taking my breath away, but I'm nice and wrapped up. Just keep my hands warm. I'm walking just along the bottom here of Lydiard Hill, which is one of the highest points on the Contox. And in a minute, I'm going to work my way up to Wheels Neck, Wheels Neck, which is the highest point. But uh, it's quite cool. You can see the views stretching out here behind me, right across Somerset. All the rolling farmland. It's a nice spot to be. You can also see where the weather's coming in. So we'll keep an eye on that. Oh, keep moving, keep moving. Oh yeah. All right. Uh, So Lydia Tail is just up there basically. We'll have a look at that on the way back. We kind of bypass going up high for now, just to stay out of the wind for a little bit. And we're just gonna work our way, as I said earlier, up to Wheels Neck, the highest point. And then the plan from there is to head down onto the Macmillan Way, which is a nice straight bit. And so we get to Crokin Park Gate, which is another car park. And then we'll go round into Great Wood, which is Great Wood and Roundscombe, a forestry commission bit where loads of people go. It's a nice area and then work our way back up to here and back up to the car. So that's the plan for today. As you can see, it really does get quite muddy this time of year. It's just trampled up by all the walkers and cyclists and dogs and horses and stuff. But uh, that's all right. It's part of walking in winter, really, especially when there's no snow. <laughs> or it's been snowy and then melts to slush. But I absolutely adore the Quantock Hills. So this is, as I said, my local patch. I've grown up here and I don't need a map. Like I know it inside out and back to front, but it's always nice to have one. There's a, you know, the occasional route that you stumble upon that I've not done before. But I just love coming here throughout all the different seasons. So right now you can see winter conditions is quite scrubby. The trees have no leaves. It's quite brown and a little bit of green. But in the summer, it just comes to life. It's so vibrant with all the color. And then in autumn, we can see even just here, um, or nearly just here, just here, we've got these blueberry or bilberry bushes, which are just lining the path. And when we get into the coombs, they just line the coombs. It's so great just to be able to go out and pick the blueberries or the bilberries and just eat them. Oh, I love this place. It's a haven. It's fantastic. Here we are then. So we're just approaching the turn off. So this path here is going to take us up to Will's Neck and a spot height of 384 meters above sea level. And this is the footpath we'll probably be coming back along to then join that final stretch of the Macmillan Way back to the car park. But uh, I expect it's going to be quite windy up there. We'll see how we go. Let's get to the top. Designated in 1959, the Quantock Hills were England's first area of outstanding natural beauty, and they formed the western border of Sedgemoor and the Somerset Levels. The highest point, Wheels Neck, also happens to be one of the most prominent points in Somerset, 
and derives its name from the Saxon word for stranger or foreigner. They're at the top! See the weather coming in! <laughs> but the views are pretty decent! That's Hickley Point, the power station over there, the nuclear power station. It really is a mind-blowing spot, with views stretching out as far as the eye can see over Dartmoor, Exmoor, the Breckens, the Mendips and the Blackdown Hills. That there is Triscombe Stone Car Park, so that's Cockacombe that way. A lot of the mountain bikers go down there and use the coombs to ride down and we're heading this way on the Macmillan Way West. I've obviously briefly mentioned that we're following the Macmillan Way at the moment, but what is the Macmillan Way? Well basically it's a 290 mile long distance trail from Boston in Lincolnshire all the way down to Abbotsbury on the southwest coast of Path in Dorset. In fact even on the Jurassic Coast, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And what's fantastic about this trail is it's designed to purely promote cancer research and fundraising for cancer relief. And uh, I just love that, you know, the trail is obviously about getting people outside, but equally having that awareness of cancer and how it affects families and individuals in their lives. And the fact that we all need to club together, pull together in order to support each other through such a, a life changing illness. But it's just a great reason to head out and explore this trail. Obviously, I'm only on a tiny stretch of it, but it passes through the Viking Way, the Thames Path Long Distance Trail, and obviously the Southwest Coastal Path. So, if there's a bit near you, definitely head out and explore it and do some research into the trail and potentially how you can support cancer research as well. Bit of a muddy patch here. Look at this. <laughs> hmm. Um, right. I think. This might be the best option. One jump. Head across this way. Uh, ooh, convenient sticks. Really? <laughs> Here we go. This way. This way. Oh, that's a bit. Don't let, that's an illusion. There we go. That is how you do it, folks. <laughs> Get through the mud. Oh, blimey. Check this out, folks. Look at that. It's snowing up there. <laughs> Gosh. And that's coming our way. But thankfully, just beyond here is the road that'll take us to Crocombe Park Gate. And then from there, we can head down into Great Wood. So we'll likely be out of the weather, which is not a bad thing. Just whilst the sun's come out and we're out of the wind, I thought we'd just run through on the map where we're going to go now. So we are here, Crocombe Park Gate, and we're going to work our way down Ramscombe, which is beautiful, beautiful, very, very easy path down to the like picnic site. There's a toilet there, car park there. Um, it's quite a cool hotspot, Honeyport area, you could call it. And then we're going to come all the way down to Quantock Coombe, come back up this way, up this way, and then probably just back up to Triscombe Stone potentially or we'll work across we'll see how we go uh and then actually yeah we will we will go through the woods i expect and then basically work our way back to lydiard hill which is there in the corner of the map so that's the plan let's go <laughs> moving away from crocombe park gate now the car park and uh i didn't want to say anything whilst i was close by because of the cars there and the people there but uh you know, when you come to these places, Exmoor, Dartmoor, the Quantox, you leave your car at your own risk. And uh, I know Crocombe Park Gate, just a few months ago, my mum had her car broken into, which is just the most ridiculous thing. Because you come out here to have a wonderful time, get some fresh air, let the stress out, and the next thing you know, your car's been broken into. But the really great thing is, you know, the ranger teams and the police are on the case, and it is slowly becoming a little less common to have your car broken into and this place is there's nothing special about this place it's no 
you're no more or less at risk than anywhere else in truth but the point of this is just do not leave valuables in your car when you come to these places and you know sometimes it is worth just getting a sign saying no valuables are left in your car because why would they chance it if out of all the cars that are there to chance your car which says I've made a point to leave nothing in here so sometimes it's just worth having a think about that planning what you're doing um, yeah just don't leave stuff in your car folks a little life tip there <laughs> Any guesses where we are? Oh. <laughs> Great word, Forestry Commission. There's toilets, walking, and a picnic site. Game on. It's been a while since I've actually seen this part of the woods being worked on by the Forestry Commission. You can see all of the pine trees, or many of them have been torn down. Potentially that's by storms, but I think this is giving it away that it's not. And all the way up there, They've all been pulled down. Wow. And obviously the big stop sign kind of gives it away that there's forestry work in operation. <laughs> oh, interested to see what the rest of the forest holds. Oh my life. Oh, look. Dear. Them just there. Wow, look at that. Ah, oh, that was so exciting. I just love how these pretty big creatures um, can thrive, and they do thrive just around us, and half the time we don't even notice. It's just insane. I wish I had stuff like that. <laughs> wow, look at this. It's so like gnarly and torn up. That there was like a tiny little footpath before. Gosh. Oh well, fine. I mean, I know the Forestry Commission, like especially when people see this, they can find it very controversial and it can really hit a spot for some people. And uh, you know, for me it does too. I mean, this isn't exactly aesthetically pleasing. The river here is just like carrying on with its life and everyone mankind wise just comes and tears up the land. But. Uh, the Forestry Commission, obviously they do do this. They are effectively farming the land. The timber, they're growing this non-native, straight, really quick growing pine stuff. Um, that's just ideal for our homes and buildings. Um, and then we, you know, we can't complain about it if we're using the stuff, surely. But I mean, equally, they do create access points for recreation as we'll see in a minute. You know, Ramscombe, they've put together a picnic site, toilets, education facilities. They want to see people get outside and using the spaces that they own. And that is the plus side of, of what they do. But, uh, you know, I don't think anyone can argue that this doesn't look that great, <laughs> to be honest. There, there we go. That's a perfect example. We can see the fringe here of the forest where they've cut up to. And look how straight and tall those pines are. They're very, very shallow rooted, so this time of year they topple very easily in the wind. But look at that, that's just super straight, you just chuck them through a machine and you've got wood right there. Very few, the branches are all very thin and spindly so they come off so easily and they're just quick growing. So that's, that's exactly why they farm them and, and forest them, because of convenience. But we can also see, look how dark it is. Obviously we've got the light here, so this is going to promote new growth and hopefully of native species. But we can see how dark it is, it's just a wall of blackness. And that canopy is completely stopping any light from coming down. So really within these monocultures, so the single plants, um, nothing else can grow. There's no space for native species at all. So that is one of the arguments, is that by harvesting or, or growing and harvesting these non-native plantations um, you know we're, we're getting rid of space for our native species not only plants but also the animals like down here we haven't got red squirrels and you're not going to get grey squirrels in there but you're not going to get anything because there is no light that can reach the forest floor so nothing can grow so literally this is just pine space <laughs> whereas things like the scots pine and the other native pines in scotland 
you know, they're the perfect hab habitat for crossbills and, and red squirrels and for goshawks as well. They're just, that's, that's where they're supposed to be. But here it's slightly different. So uh, I'll leave you to make your own conclusion with your opinion as to what you feel about these spaces. But as I say, the plus side is that I can come here and be outside and in nature, whether it's destroyed or not. If you go left, that takes you to the car park down at Ranscombe and the picnic site and a nice little river. We're going to go right so I can show you the toilet facilities and you still see the car park, you still see the picnic site and then the paths join, converge, good word, and then we'll head up back to the ridge. So you can see the picnic area, some people down there and then it stretches all the way that way as well. And there's lots of spaces for campfires and barbecues, which is great in the summer. And the river just follows it down the bottom there. It's just a great spot to be. And then here is the Lewes and the Forestry Commission Centre. So they're obviously not open now because it's a Sunday. So why would they be open? But it's just a great place to come uh, with families, with kids. That's, that's why people come here, really. It's kind of a honeypot area, as I said before. Everyone kind of congregates here and then heads up on the various trails to wherever they're going on the Quantox. Here's the other car park at the end of Ramscombe. And what I was gonna suggest is we have a look at the cost. But it looks to me like the ticket machine is out of order. Okay. Oh no, maybe not. So, up to two hours, two pounds. Over two hours, three pounds. So, go crazy. Either that, or park up at the top and get it for free. We are well and truly on, or in, or heading up Quantock Coombe now. And what's quite cool really about this side of the Contox is um, the coombs here, as you can see, are so much wider and there's often big trails going up them. But when you get around to Holford and all the other little places like that on the other side of the Contox, the coombs are tiny and uh, very steep sided. They've got ancient woodland, silver birch, oak, beech, hazel growing up the sides. There's a little river going down through the middle and the ground is just lined with bilberry but uh, as you can see it's just quite a contrast so what I hope to do and I'm really excited to do is to take you for a walk around that side of the Contox at some point in the very near future until then let's keep climbing this coom this is a great place to get my heart rate up <laughs> This spot here is where we turn away from Krontok Coombe and we head up Hart Hill. Um, if you carried on that way, it'd take you to a little spring called David's Well, which has got some kind of historical significance that I cannot recall right now. But uh, we're just going to start the climb up Hart Hill. It's a bit of a climb. It's pretty much the steepest climb, steepest and longest climb on this route today. So we'll just storm up to the top, get our heart rate up, feel good and uh, crack on from there. Up we go. Whew. Oh, that's good. Pursuing health. Let that be motivation to move. Oh, good job. All right, we're at the top. Let's head to the car parky thingy somewhere. I just let my brain catch up. I think I left it at the bottom. <laughs> right, I refound my brain, thankfully. Probably ought to use that again in the future at some point. And uh, I'm on a road. So this road takes us to Truscombe Stone, which is that mountain bikers car park that we passed earlier. We are not gonna go all the way to the car park this time though. 
we're going to head east to an area called the Slades. So this is again Forestry Commission, follow a big obvious track until we hit the Axis land again uh, and an area called Aishalt Common. Weave our way around the top of some valleys until we reach the junction and Lydia's Hill. And what I'm not going to do is get run over before I do any of that. But you can see on the ground, look at this scattering of hailstones. They're actually quite big. Look at them. Pretty sizable. <laughs> Get ready to duck. Oh, oh, we are good. All right then, the slades, here we come. Wow, look at that view. Not bad, is it? Not bad. This here is one of the kind of drop-off points and in fact it actually goes up there but uh thumbs up if you'd like to see me mountain biking give it a go this year i've only done a little bit before in a few races but i'd be keen to give it a go um i just you know i think it's very important to bring up the importance of politeness when it comes to using quite small spaces like these different users often conflict um, mountain bikers and dog walkers for example often conflict um, or you know there's often agitation around that and I just think it's important whatever sport it is you do whether you you're walking your dog you're out for a, a day walk you're riding your bike riding a horse whatever it is it's just being respectful to other users and treating them with as much respect as you would expect to be treated yourself and then equally if someone doesn't it is about educating so I think you do have a right to challenge them in a healthy way um, because these areas are open for everybody they're not specific for one group of people everybody is allowed to come here and find their sport and grow into the people they were created to be and I do believe it's coming out to spaces like this that allow us to do that um, so do not fear coming into contact with other users but just be aware of that and be respectful of that. The walk through the forest is always refreshing. It's a real breathing space with only the wind and the trees as background noise. Just before we head back up into the wind, because we're almost approaching a short common where we exit the woodland into the common land, uh, I want to share some exciting news with you. So for those of you that follow my social media pages, you will have seen that I have recently qualified as a hill and moorland leader. I've done my expedition skills module and I have my mountain leader assessment coming up in June. And the idea of doing this is so that I feel confident and capable of taking groups of folks out into the wilder areas of the UK. And I'm super stoked to share with you that this year I'm gonna be leading some guided walks. This is gonna be the first walk that I'm running and it's gonna be in March. There are a limited number of places on all of these walks folks. So if you do want to head out for a walk with me, some of the walks are going to be kind of just easier afternoon strolls to a wilder area where we just look at the flora and fauna that we find. And others are going to be more challenging. They're going to be a, right, let's stomp it out. Let's get these miles covered and head to the pub at the end. But uh, as I say, limited number of places. So if you fancy doing a walk with me, if you fancy heading out to a wilder area, exploring a new region of the UK, check out my Facebook page where each walk is under an event and we'll keep adding new ones throughout the year. But also check out the guided walk tab on my website where you can hire me to basically take you on a walk or join a guided walk group with a limited number of places. It's a small fee and that's so that I can just keep funding coming out and doing walks like this. But that's exactly why I've done this walk today because I wanna show you how absolutely awesome it is, how great it's gonna be in March and I cannot wait to see you when we do the walk. So get booked on and I'll see you then. Out of the forestry area and into a short common. Here we go. It's trying really hard to snow. There's this big cloud up here and you can tell it's pretty cold up there. That kind of bluish tinge is all the ice crystals and uh, 
they're just circulating in the cloud and the same over there on the horizon up above Will's neck yeah it's pretty cold up there we got all this hail on the ground well now it's hailing Ow. don't look that way <laughs> the ground is slowly becoming white which is exciting Righty-ho, we've come into the woods out of the hill and we can see here, this is the junction. We went up there to go to Will's Neck and this was the other path I said about that we're coming on now. So this is what we walked earlier. We'll follow this trail back to the junction with Lydia's Hill, head up to the top and back down to the car. Straight up to the top. There's no set trig point on the top here as far as I've ever found, but we'll just walk up to the top and then walk right down again. <laughs> oh, this hill walking lark, it's so complicated. Pretty decent views of the Bristol Channel as well. Oh, does this place get any better? So the absolute top tops that way. We're just gonna cut this way, just slightly short of the top and head back to the car now. So there you have it folks, in a beautiful twilight I conclude today's walk. That took me just over three and a half hours and that was without stopping. So it's a pretty decent walk for an afternoon. My face is so numb I can't feel it but thankfully the car park has just appeared on the horizon. But uh, you know I really want to encourage you to check out the wilder places near to your home and if you are obviously in South Somerset or even North Somerset, come out and check this place out. So the Quantock Hills is not the biggest place or area of open access land in the world, but it's got its own character. It's full of wildlife. There's loads you can do here, loads of places to explore, and it's just such a wonderful area to be able to come to. So the Quantock Hills, either I'll see you on my walk or I'll see you on the trail. Until next time, stay wild.